Hello traders, welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar on SB Trade Desk. Michael Boutros here with you this morning. Good to be with you guys here this morning. We're about uh, 30 seconds out from the release of the US CPI numbers for April. We are expecting a downtick. This is the one that matters right here, core year on year, uh, from 2.2 to 2.1%. Now you're seeing um, you know, some of that might be leaning on the dollar strength, what have you. Long story short, that's the focus along with real average weekly earnings. Uh, again, about 15 seconds out. The dollar has been mixed on the session. Really, Sterling, Aussie, and Kiwi taking a bite out of the dollar. The rest of the pairs falling. Net, net, the dollar index, the Dow Jones FXCM dollar index, uh, still lower on the week. Survey says... 0.4, 2.1 as expected. So don't expect too much of a drop. This should be pretty supportive for the dollar in the immediate term, just on the fact that we're uh, sort of in line with market expectations. You did see an uptick in the month on month read to 0.4%. That's dollar supportive uh, year on year headline figure at 1.1. Uh, real weekly earnings, 1.3%, small build from the previous week. Remember, the Fed has been broadly looking at um, PCE, which I noted that in Sunday's report, the personal core expenditure, and it's a little bit better of a gauge um, of the personal consumption expenditure, excuse me, a better gauge of consumer spending. So long story short, uh, that's the print that's really going to matter a little bit later in the month, but these le le levels, excuse me, in line with expectations, housing starts came out at the same time, nice bump up there, 6.6% uh, month on month, you're looking for a print of 33 Building permits, slightly shy, but broadly not too misaligned from expectations here. Wouldn't go chasing dollar strength. Uh, should be supportive for the near term. Here's what the dollar index looks like. Again, I leave room. I know uh, Jamie's looking at the same exact thing. I leave room for a possible stretch uh, higher for this median line. So we reworked the levels on this from last week. If you've been following along with us here on the webinars, uh, a little bit of a tilt here. If you just do an, adjust, uh, an adjusted median line formation uh, or a shift, which basically just takes the slope of the predominant trend line, uh, it gives you a little bit more room to the upside before this thing comes into anything serious. So a little bit wary of uh, trying to get too aggressive here just yet. Taking a look at this on a 30-minute chart, Here's what it looks like from the start of the week. Nothing too impressive on its face. All it's made is a basic weekly opening range. And again, uh, these levels are the same levels from last week, guys. So no change on that. Okay, with that out of the way, <laughs> good morning to everyone in the room. Uh, Permendra, Kelly, Mark, obviously Eileen, thank you. Happy uh, new week to you as well. As always, feel free to go through any questions or specific pairs you guys want to cover. I do want to jump pretty quick into price action because I do see, uh, just glancing over on my sterling chart here, we are seeing a little bit more of that predominant pullback. Uh, we've been following the sterling crosses. Very interesting. Continue to like the long side, broadly speaking. Uh, Kiwi dollar, the rally overnight failed like right at the early open, so we, d we definitely want to talk about that. Uh, Euro, we remain on the bearish side, sub 1367. Uh, the SPX bounced at an uh, insane spot yesterday, the same exact support level that we were looking at last week, so I do want to take a look at that as well. All right, let's jump right in. Uh, Graham, is the audio okay now? Just want to make sure... I'm seeing that uh, post late there. Okay, thanks, Rick. Um, yesterday's post. Okay, so uh, dollar CAD. We highlighted this one also uh, on daily FX. You know, the major thing or the major region of support that I was looking for was right here. We dribbled right below it, and then it did like a mean reversion trade. Here's what it looks like on the daily chart first. <clears throat> and then here's what it looked like yesterday in the daily chart. And the main thing here was you were at support, former resistance. And this is just a simple slope line off of the yearly high. So if you take channel resistance that we were in for a good four months uh, before the breakout, extend that 
parallel right off the high, real basics. Um, you saw that that caught the rally earlier in the month. Pull back, break through, look where we found today's low. Okay, right at former resistance, now support. Uh, so if this pushes through yesterday's high, it would be an outside day reversal. And typically those are pretty constructive. The only thing I just want to highlight to everyone here is again, the major key resistance remains in play, 129.85 into 129.77. This is a longer dated 618 retracement off the low. This is a basic 236 off the high. That's not the whole gist of it. At this point, it also is just ahead of, or just beyond rather, I should say, the monthly high day close and that long dated 2006 pivot line. It's going to take me a while to scroll back, but bear with me, it's worth it. <laughs> Come on. Right here. So this is just the same mirrored slope off the lows, caught the highs, extended off the 2006 low. You can see how many times we've pivoted off that same level. Support, breakthrough, resistance, resistance, breakthrough, support. And here we are now testing it again. We're going to need to break through that level. It converges right on that FIB confluence. There it is. So make or break level, 129.85, we'll call it just 129.90 at this point to get through. Um, and if we clear that, there's really nothing major on tap till 132.14, you have the 200 day moving average. Um, at this point, 133.50 or so. Thirty-three fifty-five, uh, and then the major pivot level at thirty-four uh, nineteen, thirty-four sixty. So it's make or break. Before we get even start talking about these targets, for our purposes on the scalp level, this is the range that we're trading until we get out. Here's what it looks like on the thirty-minute chart, and here's what it looked like last night. So a brief dip below that uh, support zone. Saw a quick reversion in, in momentum. You can also see that we had divergence right here on that low. Um, again, this is the wee morning hours here in New York. So if you were trading in London, it was a bit uh, ominous until you got through back above that 128 uh, support zone, 128.77, excuse me, support zone. But again, like I said yesterday, I don't want to rely too heavily on this slope, but this does give us a little bit more of a conviction upside focus into that key resistance. Still the level to beat. Okay, still the level to be, no change, 129.75, 129.86, uh, 85 level. Any questions on um, dollar CAD? Okay, so now that we've had this discussion, let's sort of clean this up real quick. I'm going to leave this slope line just for now because on the way down, again, you look to see if you find some support right along that level to the up pivot. Um, sort of grayed out for now. And bear with me, I just want to see if we have anything here interesting. <clears throat> Could be something to watch for. Could be something to watch for heading into the US Open. Uh, again, Way too early for these slope levels just yet, but once you start to see a little bit more of a prominent reaction off it, uh, it does highlight a break above that major key level, or at least a test of it, um, heading into the close of U.S. session today. All right, so let's move on. 
um, sterling, sterling yen, and kiwi dollar in that order. So, uh, well, before we do, one more reset. I do want to just go over real quick the gold trade because that's going to be pretty big on the back of the release for these uh, CPI numbers. You got UK CPI and overnight trade, which was sort of mixed, guys. Headline figures are pretty weak. PPI was stronger than expected. Um, so you're seeing sort of lackluster uh, reaction here, although the pullback was prompted by it. Uh, but gold looks like this. I think it's a big fake out yesterday. Everyone was starting to look back right at the highs. Uh, it's a good thing that we highlighted sort of that major reversal or basically where we reversed last week. So um, still in focus is this ascending median line formation off the low. Initial break here would at least have us looking towards the basic monthly opening range lows um, and would necessitate or at least propagate a little bit more of a correction to the downside. Looking at momentum, this thing couldn't be uh, more valid at this point, especially taking it off the low in price. You can see that this support trigger just waiting okay, for a price drop uh, to possibly prompt a little bit more of a larger correction to the downside. Here's what we look like in price yesterday on the 30 minute. And here's what we look like now. Okay, so we're right back at that key support. Uh, you had to play for a short side trade from 20, uh, excuse me, from 1279 as we noted last night. Bearish invalidation level now drops uh, down, excuse me, to basically the high that we made right here at 1285. Uh, it's a 618 retracement of the entire decline off the high. Uh, you had the 50 line on that region in overnight trade or basically an overnight trade tonight. Um, and as long as we stay below this region, I think you're at risk for further declines here in gold. So uh, the basic, again, level to beat to the downside to trigger the larger correction would still be 1268, basic 618 of this advance. And at this point, basic slope support. Okay, so a play to the downside there would certainly be a basic objective break of the weekly opening range and certainly shift the downside here for gold. So it sort of looks like a scenario where you can see the dollar stretch a little bit higher again um, and gold sort of give us a little bit more of a break to the downside before um, any, major t any major turns in price. Still looking pretty lower and on the weekly basis, if you just keep in mind where um, sort of the broader trade is, you know, we're just coming off a big region and you've been marking divergence all up into those highs on a weekly basis. Again, bring this into a line chart. So you can see a scenario, again, where gold gives a little bit more of a pullback and especially since everyone's starting to get super bullish, uh, which we've been bullish since the start of the year, it's sort of hard to imagine this just kind of skyrocketing from here. So use some caution, looking for the downside, broadly speaking, but we'd need to see a break sub 1268. Uh, don't put it past this thing to give us one last rebound here, but this is the level to beat to really get any material downside play. Pretty clean technically on the longer term, pretty clean. Any questions on gold? <clears throat> Eileen says, well, I should have sold the gold uh, when I sold the house. I don't think the, the broader bull rally is over, uh, Eileen. I just think you have a, a, an opportunity here for a little bit more of a substantiated pullback. And again, crowd sentiment with what's going on in the dollar. Um, you know, it just kind of like fits into the to the broader picture. Um, Nazia says, what just happened with the dollar yen? I'll take a quick segue for you. What's going on? Uh, this is just reaction to, this is just reaction to, I guess, um, the data. I don't know what you want to say about dollar yen. Here's the thing with dollar yen, and this is all I'm going to say. Oh. Sorry to hear that, Nazir said it took out all my stops. So, look, for those of you, I don't know, Nazir, how long you've been with us here in the webinars. You've been here for a while, right? Uh, you know my feelings on dollar yen. Remember these levels, guys? We talked about this last week. I don't remember who it was here in the room who had requested dollar yen, and we kind of just jumped into it, and we literally just slapped this setup together right here in the webinar. I haven't touched it since. 
basically we were like, oh, maybe 109.46 would be a good level. That's the last, this is when we put it together, I guess, on the 12th. Um, that's still the level to be. I mean, but do you see why we don't like really scalping this trade too much? Um, so I'm not sure where your position was on from Nizia, but this was a big, big resistance region. Nice confluence, 618 off the low, 618 retracement off the off the highs. So this is the extension. This is the retracement overlap and the highs that we've been making, right? So it's definitely some resistance. Um, I don't really have a trade here, though. Whoops. So here's what the daily looks like. Thought it cleared the resistance. Yeah, I sort of, look, it depends what time frame that you're looking at. From a daily standpoint, I kind of glanced at this this morning. Um, and yeah, it does look like it may have been pushing through. But this is why we really need to focus a little bit more on the closes. If you're going to validate a breakout, Nizia, and you're going to decide to buy a breakout, you really need to close above a major key resistance to kind of confirm it, right? Because if you're buying it on the breakout, any day that you have a wick or a pullback or something like this, you know you're going to get fake. You're going to get a fake out. So I'd much rather sell into resistance, buy into support. Okay, then uh, necessarily try to to buy the breakout here, and it's especially in dollar yen, especially in dollar yen. Listen, I wouldn't get too aggressive on the short side from here. I'd look for the pullback, um, see if we can find some support near the weekly open, near these slope lines, but not a trade that I uh, that I trust by any means. Oops. Nizia, does that help? It stings a little bit, but um, keep your eye basically on the weekly open. To see if you can find some support there. If that breaks, forget it. It's probably going to give you a much quicker break right back uh, towards the lows from like last month. Um, a little bit more of a mean type of reversion trade. Also look at momentum off the daily uh, chart. You know, you were kind of like right there today. You're right there. So again, today's close, <clears throat> if you see this thing pull back off this region, you know, look for a pullback to get back on the long. If it clears this on the upside, maybe again, this kind of thing, you never know with the dollar yen. If it closes higher and momentum closes above, at that point on the near term, we'd start to look for near term pullbacks to buy. But as long as you're like right under this zone, um, she's ugly, not going to lie. What's that slope level for, Nizia? On which chart, the 30 or the daily? Thirty. Um, believe it or not, this is a old, old slope from just. I'll bring it back for you, like months and months and months ago that I just left on, but continue to play uh, in price over and over again. It's from way up here. Just the highs that you made on the November stretch. If you guys remember, we were following the scalp closely at that point. An initial slope broke, right? And then that new high, when we drew another one, turned out to be the same exact slope. So literally, uh, we kind of just worked with both of them. And they worked all the way down. Even when they broke, they were resistance. They pivoted on it many, many, many times. Uh, so now that we broke this region here, you sort of think, of, okay, Decent breakout, but big, big, big region right above. And that's kind of, I think, what we're running into right here. So I do like the break. I do like the higher trade in general, but that rally coming at some serious resistance at this point. Says, got it. Thanks. Anytime. Anytime. And again, I wish I had more conviction for you guys on the, on the end trade in general, but uh, from a near-term standpoint, I've been stung by this thing a lot of times, so I tend to shear away unless there's a lot of clarity in the technicals. Now, if you're hell-bent on trading the yen, sterling yen's a decent trade, and we'll go over that in a moment, but first, uh, let's jump into sterling dollar.
Okay. So, a little bit quicker than I expected, but uh, sort of the game plan played out. Here's what Sterling looked like last night. Uh, we proposed a pitchfork right off the lows. It looks like it still could be in play. Uh, we kind of rallied right into those highs. Um, we've been following this one since Sunday. Here's what the 30 minute looks like at this point. So we pivoted right above, right above that median line. Just missed the target here to the upside. Remember, you're looking for 31 pips. These targets are well beyond 30 pips. And I do that on purpose sometimes, especially on pairs that are a little bit more um, or that tend to see a lot more spike action like the Sterling. So just remember, guys, you don't necessarily need to put your limits at, at the levels. Uh, keep all the limits on the inside, but in general, anytime you complete a quarter of a daily ATR, take some off, okay? Bring your stops in, take some off. So in general, uh, we just missed the 45.28 level, which was basically last week's high, um, and a really nice soft pivot in price, as you see me have labeled there. In general, testing that near-term slope support right now. So if this pivot is real, or if this slope rather is real, guys, I would expect some sort of pivot here uh, in the pound. Momentum, same support trigger that we were looking at yesterday. You're testing it now as support. Okay, so this thing kind of just broke through, came back, tested a support. That same slope or that same support trigger and momentum is right there. So we'll be looking for some long triggers here if we head into the U.S. trade session on a stretch lower, if we kind of just like probe lower and then uh, maybe a reversal trade here might be a decent run. Uh, if you do break back below a basic slope, just basic trend line resistance off the highs, I'd be weary for a test uh, back of the broader support here. Let me zoom this out for you real quick. You guys have the scale charts, which has all this, but... And again, just a reminder to anyone who's new to the room, if there is a link, it's not always going to be there, uh, such as here, but if there is a link above uh, that pair, uh, if you click on it, it's going to take you to the last, the most recent previous update on that. So here's where we were uh, on Sunday, right? And there's that support region, and there's the bounce. Biases and levels remain unchanged. Um, at this point, I'm pretty comfortable bringing up the near-term bullish invalidation to the weekly open. So we're going to bring it up from 4285 uh, or 4285 slash 43 uh, right into the weekly open. You know, if we break below that, it would necessitate clearing the structure to the downside. And at that point, you know, I just don't, you know, wouldn't necessarily want to be on the long side of the, of the scalp. Um, but to get bearish, we'd need to clear this to the downside. It's still the same region. So on a move into here, I would actually still be looking for possible long exposure. It, I would need to clear this level to the downside before I'd start looking to short uh, Sterling with any type of aggression here. Okay, we're still within the formation until we're not. I hate those cliches, but truth be told. Any questions on the pound? Expect some back and forth here a little bit. Um, the numbers for the UK CPI print look like this. You know, it's pretty mixed. Uh, CPI came in weaker than expected month on month. Core CPI missed by um, 0.2 uh, percentage points. We're looking for a, a read of uh, 1.4. That came in at 1.2%. So that's a 0.3% drop on the core year-on-year -year read. Now, the uh, PPI number is a little bit uh, stronger than expected, uh, both uh, mostly on the output side, but you know it's not necessarily going to shift the needle at all. If we look at interest rate expectations from the BOE, there's really, I mean, they don't exist really. By the way, before we take a look, here's what the U.S. Uh, Fed fund futures look like. Uh, heading into June, looks like markets are only pricing in a 6% probability at this point that we'll see any type of rate hike. So Despite the rally that you're seeing in the dollar and despite all this commentary with regards to the data, it uh, looks like we priced out June altogether. Uh, there's no real material expectations, meaning above 50% till June. And this shifts. Remember a couple of weeks ago, they kicked it out past February. So it is coming up, meaning they are expecting the Fed is likely to, to raise this year. But expectations of two to three hikes, no. Markets right now are pricing in uh, one. 
Uh, but going back to the BOE, you know, it's, I don't even know if it's necessarily worth looking at this right now. This is, uh, again, overnight index uh, swaps. There's really no material expectations for anything this year or into June of next year, okay? Um, but if anything, markets are concerned about a possible further easing, not normalization yet, where the Fed, the side is on, um, you know, whether we're going to actually hike. So interesting stuff. Again, we don't focus on this here, um, you know, in our primary discipline, but I bring it up when it matters. So we'll be, re we'll be jumping back into those kinds of data prints or data points as they uh, become relevant to the markets. So looking at the pound, uh, any questions here? Eileen says, was there an RSI trigger later on Sunday on the long side for the pound? There actually was. It was this. <clears throat> it's pretty ugly, but the reason why it looked very interesting to me is because it was on building divergence. So into the Friday close, you basically had some divergence as soon as you opened Sunday. But then on that last drop, again, there was further divergence. So all three reference points are giving you further divergence. Um, and then if we take a look at the five minute, let's take a look. I mean, it's a good drill to do sometimes. It wasn't the cleanest trigger, but you have, again, some building divergence into the lows. I wouldn't necessarily have stressed that. The only thing that looks interesting to me here wouldn't have been on the Sunday open per se, Eileen. That would have been just off the level of where you are. Primary thing here would, be, would have been a break just of the objective uh, Tokyo-Sydney opening ranges, specifically because you failed at the low right at support, right at support. So, again... As we always want to stress here, guys, these are momentum triggers that we look for, uh, opening range breaks. These are all tools to help us decide where we want to inevitably jump into a trade, right? Um, but it's all about the levels. It's always going to be about where the market is trading. So we just happen to open the week in the pound at a major, um, I wouldn't call it major, but at a decent support structure. You had a swing high. You had uh, just basic structural support after the median line literally caught the, the high almost to the pip. It was ridiculous uh, earlier in the month. So just a real clean level of which to expect some sort uh, of rebound in price. Now, as I noted on, on, on the Sunday open, I thought we were going to get a deeper cut and an opportunity to get long off of that key Fibonacci confluence. Uh, between 12.85 and 43, you have a lot of levels. This is a nice clean 618 extension off the high. This is a 618 retracement off the lows. This is a broader, broader 50% retracement. And all of them converge on that slope line, the parallel of that same of the same structure. So the pitchfork in blue, if you take a parallel of it, it all converges right here. So kind of would have been really too clean, I guess, for the pound <laughs> to spike right into that level, then move off. Uh, we kind of just launched right off of the lower parallel, but you know we won't get greedy. At this point, long story short, if it comes into the weekly open, still looking to stay constructive, um, but to get short or to start shorting rallies, I'd be needing a break back below still that key region. Okay, next top side targets, still look at 42, uh, 45, 28. I'd still be looking to book something there. But 45, 88, which represents the February high day close and a decent pivot in price, uh, that converges on the upper parallels heading deeper into the week here, uh, uh, basically tomorrow towards the end of U.S. trade. Yeah, I agree with you. It says Sterling looks like the better entry was Monday London Open. Yep. Just talking from a price standpoint. Interestingly enough, as you're just noting, the, the London Open was actually when you cleared the, um, the Tokyo opening ranges. 
So let me bring that back real quick. Here's a five minute chart for that Sunday open. So Sunday Tokyo open, Sydney open, we're still holding that same range. Uh, London comes in, fails at the highs, fails at the lows. And once you finally clear the highs, um, that's sort of your giveaway that we've made a break of that opening range. But it's pound stuff, guys. So always expect, always expect uh, the throw over to the upside, the throw over and failure to the downside. Usually there's a time factor that I want to see a little bit uh, more of price spend some time above resistance or support before we start to scalp it on the long side or short side. Graham said that Sunday Sterling break needed a very large stop loss. Depends what scale time frame you're looking at, Graham. If we were heading into that from a scalping standpoint, um, and you took a long off the break of the opening range from here, the stop would need to be against the low. You can't really do anything beyond that. That would have put you just outside 30 pips, you're right. If you're working two to one on the ATR of 25 gram, that's going to be tough. I don't want to get, um, yeah, I don't know if you're suggesting that <laughs> or, or asking. We don't really want to, you know, press it. It's 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 hard to to do anything more than one to one. Yeah, I mean, especially if you're looking for 30 pips. And here's the thing, guys. If the trade works out, great. You're gonna feel like a king. But uh, the problem is. You put a stop 15 pips away or anything like that, you're just asking for it, right? You really need to be working in a very fast market to be able to work an effective stop of that magnitude. And just doesn't, doesn't end up working all that well. Obviously, anytime you can increase your risk reward, guys, I'm all about it, all about it. But that's where scaling in and out of a position uh, really helps me more so. All right. So, British pound, good to go. If you're crazy and hell-bent on trading the yen, <laughs> uh, here's what sterling yen looks like, and this is to be the yen cross I would be focused on. Really nice playing overnight. I do want to be mindful for the long side for everyone who's been following along on that scalp. So, again, we'll go back to um, last night's radar chart. Here's what we look like. We were following this on Sunday. Uh, we had added a slope off this high. I kind of just adjusted it yesterday, and look what happened. It caught the lows, and it caught the highs. So you had a clear level of, um, or a clear level that you had to beat, rather, to the upside to get going. That was 57.80. Here's what Sterling Yen looks like now. And here's why I don't want to get too greedy at this point and start playing aggressively the long side beyond here. So you got the break. Um, and we took out the first target at 58.47. Uh, the next level to the upside that we were looking at was 59.29, and that was this uh, 618 key retracement. Also, just wanted to highlight, this is from last week's setup, guys. Nothing has changed. This is just a parallel of the same slope we've been following. And it looks like if you move this over just a tad, we could be more so in the realms of possibility of slope resistance. So I don't want to get too aggressive. Again, it's a pound and yen cross. Talk about wicked pairs. I mean, this is sort of like the culmination of the two. Uh, still do like the upside for sure, but I'd be looking for a little bit more of a prominent pullback uh, to get on the longs. We might be getting that right now as we speak. And this retracement's no longer in play. Quick reminder to anyone in the room, again, I see some new names here. Uh, if you have to take any pictures or you'd like to take a snapshot of any of the charts that we're following here, there's a quick uh, camera button in the top right-hand corner of your GoToWebinar screen. Just go ahead and click on that so you can reference these charts whenever you need uh, later in the day. Again, we have no way of validating that this is going to be a concrete high, but for near-term price action, we just want to see where the levels would be coming in. 618 matches perfectly with the weekly opening range low. Not that I expect a pullback to that magnitude. At this point, this slope is not going to be of any use.
just sort of checking things out here. All right, so we'll bring up our bullish invalidation level to 56, basically let's call it 57, 50, uh, 56.93 here. Nice pivot in price into 57. It is the 6.18 of this week's rally, of this week's entire range, basic trend line support. Okay. Um, with the next level of next level of interest that we really need to get through still unchanged at that 59 uh, 59 29 next and in fact pushing that trend line that we did that slope a little bit lower kicks that out a little bit further in the week which kind of gives you the possibility the room the time uh, to reset a little bit lower before we turn remember much more volatile pair guys a quarter of the daily ATR here takes it to 54 pips. So this is a pair, Graham, just to go to your point, uh, where you can give yourself a little bit more of a better play. Look for a nice rebound off of a resistance, rebound off the of support, try to grab that, um, you know, stop loss, bring it in even closer than 55 pips. I'd be very, very comfortable taking a 30, 25, 30 pip stop on this. Um, and that'll give you the two to one ratio that you would look to typically work with on any basic strategy. Remember, we don't have the luxury of working guys on a you know, max five to one, four to one type of ratio and risk to reward. When you're near term trading and you're placing the sheer volume of trades that we're doing, um, you know, it's, it's, the, it's just not there. So obviously it's a percentage game of winning trades to losing trades as opposed to um, necessarily risk to reward, which does put the a lot more work into it. But the opportunity is there to really lever up and play the same ranges over and over again uh, when the market kind of gives us these lulls and specifically the duration of time risk, right? We're not in, in the markets. Our exposure time is much, much less, uh, so we're less susceptible to major economic releases, central bank talk, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, near term, the immediate focus, the immediate risk is for a draw lower. I'd be looking for long triggers as we head into 57.30, 57 here. Uh, see if we can get a move back up on the upside. And just on the immediate front, and this is like super near term, but just bear with me. Look where that... Okay. Kind of just watch those real near-term levels. But look where the 2618 kind of highlights that same level we were just talking about. For stilling yen, what's a good time to day of trade it? Um, trade that thing. <laughs> it mixes London and Tokyo. It, it's pretty active in both, Eileen. It's pretty active in both. So the best way to, to find out, guys, or if you're looking at a pair and you're interested in trading, kind of like what's the best time to trade? Look when the, <clears throat> excuse me, look when the major turns happened. Here's the open of Tokyo. That was an important level. Um, the turn that we made here. Also, uh, excuse me, this is the open of London uh, at the highs that we made today. The turn that we made <clears throat> earlier in the week was also right here. My cursor wants to move right into the open of London. Um, keep going back. The high that we made last week, that was actually in U.S. trade, open of Tokyo, open of Tokyo, open of London. So yeah, at the Tokyo opens, at the London opens is when you've made most of the major turns over the last week uh, week or so. So those are, the, those are the when I start to look for possible entries, possible exhaustions. The best way to play these trades, in my humble opinion, specifically on really wide ATR trades, uh, is sort of like the exhaustion play. Is when you look that it's sort of maxed out the daily ATR already and it's at resistance, um, whether it's trend line resistance, whether it's confluence support from a Fibonacci level, um, but you know, it tends to give you that 
rally, 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 stretch, then the mean pullback. Rally, 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 stretch, and the mean pullback. And that's how I like playing this really wide ATR. I kind of don't like to sit in these trades for too long, obviously because they're much more volatile. So just some fruit for thought there. All right. So <laughs> we'd spend a lot of time on Sterling Yen. Any questions on Sterling Yen? One of our targets uh, have been, uh, been taken out. Again, looks like we have a weekly opening range break, but we're coming into some strong resistance there. So uh, for the daily chart, I just wanted to highlight, I, had my, I was looking at my notes real quick. Uh, so on, this, on the 30-minute chart, we have that slope resistance that we're following. On the daily chart, it's basically this formation, guys, by the way. It's just this uh, parallel of that formation. I guess I should just put it on here for you. It's basically this slope formation, right? But uh, what I wanted to highlight is the same thing that we were looking at. Do you remember on dollar yen, the November highs? and the slope that that produced, the same thing right here. Boom, boom, boom. This median line, even cleaner, which is why I, 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 I kind of discarded that dollar yen trade, and I was telling you guys, look, if you're, if you're really hell-bent on trading the yen, I mean, here's a setup that, I, in my humble opinion, again, is much cleaner. Um, the median line here caught the lows, caught the low, pivot break, resistance, resistance, resistance last month, coming right up, guys, and it converges on that 59.22 level. It's freaky, uh, but this is a big region of resistance. So uh, again, if we're looking at this uh, sort of entire region that we're testing right now, yes, I do want to be long. Do I want to be long from these levels? Look for the pullback, get a little bit better of a deeper cut near 57. I think that'll clear the way for a break above that 159.29 level. Again, all of those, both of those charts are <clears throat> right there on Sunday's update, guys. So we're now trading right here. Um, okay, so I missed some questions here. Uh, great, thanks, hey, Eileen, you're more than welcome. Sterling Yen looks like it's at an exhaustion resistance right now. Did I answer your question? Um, <laughs> you're coming into a big level, both from a daily standpoint uh, and uh, an intraday standpoint. Now also look, momentum hasn't cleared 50 yet this month. Another sort of thing we'll use to validate the breakout on a closed basis. Remember, it's the only thing that matters with these with these oscillators. But um, yes, to answer your question abruptly, yes, uh, uh, Eileen, and she says yes, yes, that answers it. But it's not counter trend trade, so that's under the assumption that we made some sort of uh, more substantiated low here. Possibly one thing you want to keep into account, and this is something that we've been talking about. Uh, for months now is the ongoing divergence and momentum that you've been putting in pretty much since the start of the year, right? And you're coming off slope support, basic trend line resistance still re leaves room for a rally uh, up into this region, right? Into this trend line. So yes, you're coming at a pivot point right now where this thing could correct lower. The immediate risk is for a pullback. Do I want to play the short side? Not necessarily from here. No, I'd rather be looking for that pullback to offer some long. Make sense? All right. And that is Sterling Yen. If no other questions on that, we'll jump right into the Kiwi. Here's what Kiwi looked like on Sunday. Okay. Bearish invalidation level, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice for some reason, uh, is 60, we, I think we noted it was 68.27 if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 68.28. We rallied right into that, even probed right through before pulling back. So from this point, here's what I'm looking at on the 30 minute, and the levels uh, are completely unchanged, right? We bounced right off that region that we were looking at on Sunday. We came into resistance, we popped back, we broke through a resistance, tested the yearly open, came off, and now we're sitting on the upside of that 50 line. 
So we're sort of just pivoting off this region right here. Still wouldn't put it past this thing to rally up towards the October high day close. And with where slope is at this point, we're going to have to sort of sit this one out as far as trying to short it from here. Um, you had an opportunity to get really, really cute with a short side trade overnight. I think this one is one I would have taken a stab at for sure, just on account of um, you know where the thing was trading. You could have had a stop against last week's high, and that would have given you like a 10 pip stop. But in any event, um, at this point, you know I don't want to do anything on the short side unless we clear this region here, or if we get a rally into the upper median line parallels, and that would offer another opportunity to get back on the short side. Right, but the broader formation has just been so clean. I kind of don't want to fight it at this point. Right, you came off the 50 line. You would expect if you come off the 50 line that the 50 line will offer resistance. Now that you've cleared the 50 line, you gotta look to the upper parallel, I think, uh, for resistance before this thing turns over. So puts it off the menu for me on the immediate side, but broadly speaking, I'm looking for either a break back below the weekly open, this basic trend line support off last week's low or a rally towards uh, 68.50, the upper parallels here, for possible entry in the short side. Not just that, the ATR here, guys, has been contracting for the last couple of days. You're only looking at 20 pips per scalp, which for me is like, you know, then wrong scalps are like cuts by a million, by a million needles, or death by a million cuts, rather. <laughs> just because the fact that, um, you know, you'll be in the trade for quite some time just to even get that those 20 pips, but then... You know, the stop is so tight, you really have to time the entries right on this one. So I think it'll become much, you'll get a lot more clarity on this and much more volatility on this once we get deeper in the week, but it's kind of quiet this week for Kiwi data. It's encouraging the failure at the early open. You kind of want to see that if the broader reversal trade that we're in on the swing side is to be, uh, is to give us the, those downside targets. All right, any questions on Kiwi? Okay, Euro dollar, also looking very interesting on this on this mini upswing that we saw in overnight trade. Let me just show you the 30 minute. I'm not really a big fan of where the daily chart looks like on the Euro guys. Broadly speaking, I just want to stay bearish of sub 1355, 1356. That's, you know, as basic as I can put it from my perspective for a couple of different reasons. A, obviously where we reversed, where we reversed earlier in the month was probably the cleanest reversal I've seen in a long time. An exact uh, 1618, high day close, um, you had slope resistance. I mean, it was just too picture perfect. But long story short, you came off, you made a monthly opening range, which looks like we broke yesterday on the decline. Um, and then you have basic median line off the highs now, and a basic 236 uh, to contend with as resistance, and both those converge sort of right around 1355. So I'd like to stay on the near term short beyond that region or below that region. Here's what the 30 minute looks like. And again, it was too early and we talked about this I think last week when we tacked this on to really rely too heavily on this, but looks like we have an upside break. We're testing it as support. So at this point, since the open of Sunday, you made a pretty clean weekly opening range and that's all I'm playing, okay? Uh, I do think you break to the upside and possibly go for a test of that 1355, 1367 at this point uh, on the near term would sort of still be in play uh, before you turn lower. But broadly speaking, you know, we're working with the assumption that uh, you want to stay on a bearish trajectory here at sub 11355. Same thing with the with the Kiwi guys. We when you get these periods of periodic just leveling, uh, wait for the volatility to arrive. 21 pips is pretty tight for even for our standards. So just keep that in mind. Any questions on Euro dollar?
we'll shelf that one for now, but it will be in play. I know the swing side of trades, you guys are in it already. So um, that swing setup and even the stops and limits on those seem perfectly fine to me. You'd have to clear this key resistance region before you'd even get to that uh, 14 stop. So I do like that trade. From the near term immediate objective, we want to break back below this pivot and see if we can get back below that upper median line. Irrespective of it being a pitchfork, guys, it's basic resistance. Resistance, resistance, three touches, validates, broke, tested a support. That's kind of what we would need to break below. And lo and behold, that's the weekly opening range as well. Here's the Sunday open. Are tight, a are tight ATR trades better to swing trade? Um, not necessarily, but when you're in a swing trade, I mean... Um, on an ATR basis, for our purposes, taking a quarter of it is kind of irrelevant, right? So it really wouldn't wouldn't matter. Um, I'm sure Jamie, and irrespective of whether it's a swing trade or whether it's a long-term trade, even when I take a longer-term trade that'll be in a couple of months, I do want to see what the ATR is. It certainly sets the expectation not only for time, but also for, for potential on the trade. Um, but... Our happy medium is like right in the right in the range of 30, 35 pips is sort of, I think, where I kind of sh the strategy shines the most because you have the ability to put that stop with a little bit more breathing room, right? And at the same time, um, you're not kind of having to time every entry right on cue, right on cue. Uh, just bear with me one moment. I do want to see... Hmm. Don't want to make it a habit of continuing to deaden the slope, but in general, remember that the debtor slope will typically always do you best. I'll leave this here for now, but we'll see if price action reacts a little bit more uh, stronger to the downside. Remember, this is a very, very clean weekly opening range here. So if we break the upside, be timid. I'd be looking for possible short entries into that region. If we break the downside, uh, look to sell bounces until the initial target would just be 112.60. Uh, but you're looking basically for the May lows, or April lows rather, uh, 112.14. Okay, Joe says, hey, Mike, uh, or hi, Mike, how about Aussie Yen? Sure, let's take a quick look at Aussie Yen. Haven't actually checked it out uh, today, so let's see what that thing is doing. Okay. Hmm, looks like you had a near-term consolidation breakout here. So these levels are really stale. Uh, Joe, I haven't updated this uh, scalp in a couple of uh, weeks here. So let's just give, give me a couple of minutes. Kind of gauge where we are. 88.6 would be right around here. Let's look to see if we've completed anything significant.
Mm, it's ugly. Any way you slice it, it looks pretty ugly, the levels at least, but let's see if we can't work some magic here. <laughs> a sort of a gap reversal there. All right. Uh, sorry for the silence there, guys. I'm just kind of visualizing this trade. It looks um, looks pretty interesting. Um, I, lo I would look for a little bit more recovery uh, to the upside before it turns over. kind of bodes well for Aussie, but um, uh, Yen, man. Yen is quite interesting. Wouldn't necessarily want to fight it here. So I think this is the slope we're working with on the daily chart. Okay. All right. So this is sort of what I'd be looking at. Uh, Joe, breakout levels that you would need to really work with is, a, is more of a concerted breach, I think, above 81. That would complete 100% or two equal legs off the low. That would put out a simple correction, then move lower. Uh, but this is where you'd look for a little bit more of a stringent resistance, at least for this rally. Now, on a break above that, I think you're looking for a little bit more of a substantiated run. You'd be looking for this pivot, obviously, just at 82, or basically 81.95. I'll draw a little tagline there. With a big, big region more at 82.43 into 82.56. Big confluence there. This is 50% of the entire decline off the highs, uh, and then a 1.618 off the low. So that would take you sort of to this region. But... Um, at least for the near term, bigger resistance at 81, and that's sort of the breakaway. I think that would give you the next leg higher. I uh, wouldn't expect too much beyond that region unless Aussie gives us a much more substantiated rebound. Okay, be careful on that one. But those are the levels I'd be working with near term. Joe, hope that helps. All right. We are running right towards the end of the session here, so I do need to just uh, jump right through. Joe says, okay, got it. No problem, brother. Did you get, did you get the uh, screenshot? Feel free to uh, snapshot that real quick um, if you need it. Done. Awesome. And um, <clears throat> here is the SPX. Just wanted to take a quick look at this. Um, just because of where we rebounded off of. And if you guys remember, 2039, 2044, a little bit bigger of a range, but um, big region. We talked about it early, early on in the month. Huge Fibonacci confluence as well as um, sort of the close low, not the low date close, but the close low uh, for April trade. So it turned out uh, to be right around where the lows were. You also had a basic slope resistance there. The rebound pulling back. Yesterday, posting an outside day reversal right off that same exact region, 2039 to 2044. So uh, look for resistance up near basic channel resistance. Uh, this is the range in focus that you have to really watch this week. Don't necessarily scalp this, guys, but a very nice barometer, obviously, on broader risk. 
uh, is the S&P, so watch that. Uh, also, we went over gold. I just want to touch base real quick on crude. Um, that's coming into a big area of resistance as well. You're looking at a basic 618 retracement of the entire decline off of the May highs from last year, um, which has been a decent pivot in price in and of itself. It's right around 140. It's right around 4860, excuse me. So just beyond the highs that we made today. Uh, I do expect a blow off high sometime near term, uh, but as long as we're in this formation, guys, you have to leave room for a possible stretch right up onto basic upper median line parallel. So it still could be on the menu here for uh, crude. Also, basic trend line resistance off of the January, late January highs puts the focus near term just a bit higher. I mean, it depends how you're drawing this. Uh, I've seen some renditions, I guess, uh, on Bloomberg drawing it as this. Look, we're going to play it the proper way. If it gets there, it gets there. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Uh, but that basically puts a little bit more emphasis on the October high day close, uh, which comes in right around 49.50. All right, so some key levels to watch the upside there for possible exhaustion on this crude trade. Remember, on its face, this is a simple monthly opening range. So we should be looking uh, for a late month high in price. All right. Uh, Rick says, as a new participant, appreciate the webinar, especially the data-driven statistical approach. Looking forward to watching some more videos and get used to the process you are following. Rick, Rick, welcome aboard, man. It's great to have you here. We do these webinars three times a week, uh, so hope you don't get <laughs> sick of my voice anytime soon. Uh, but we'll see you tomorrow. Again, bring questions, any trade setups that you'd like to follow, and we'll do our best on our side to keep you guys right on the right track. Till then. Best of luck trading, guys, and I will see you tomorrow at 8.30 uh, Eastern. Hopefully, we'll have a couple more plays in uh, or a couple more setups in play. Cheers.